I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First things first, if you're new here, please subscribe. You don't have to, of course, but it would really help me out in where I'm trying to get my channel to be. Have you ever been made to feel that you're not good enough or you're not capable or left questioning your abilities? Hmm. Well, for most of my adult life, I've been dealing with a hearing problem. And as anyone will know who's got a hearing condition or suffers with their hearing, that can affect your confidence. And sometimes you can mishear things, which can sometimes knock your confidence in a lot of scenarios. Throw on uh, wanting to climb the career ladder in a very difficult um, not always friendly uh, industry field of finance and accountancy. Um, people aren't necessarily so personal and want to necessarily talk just as a person. I do find that throughout my career so far in finance and accountancy that people very much, uh, where they're so driven, they're very much almost as awful as it sounds, looking at them first, and then literally a very narrowed sort of channel forward. And if there's any sort of aspect of emotion or, let's say, well-being that, yes, we talk about it, but do we actually always put it into practice? Sad to say, I've come across a lot of instances in my working career and in my adult life with the jobs I've had, which have left me feeling, actually, almost that you made me feel a little bit silly there, or you're questioning my abilities. But yeah, I'm a professional person, I've worked damn hard, and I'm just as equal to you. I'm a valid human being, and I am a very abled, capable person. But yet, still, when you tell yourself that, you walk away and your mind is questioning your abilities, and are you right, or are they wrong, or vice versa? Now, why am I talking about this today? Well, I am a very soft-hearted person, let's put it that way, I worry about everything. And if I say to somebody something, or if I actually do sort of um, speak out, and I would always call out something which isn't right, my integrity is absolutely everything. And I hate to see people mistreated or, or all of those type of things, which we just should do. But yet in today's society, a lot of people sadly will just walk past. So for me, I'm very soft hearted, but I do worry about how did I come across that person? I'm not worried about sort of confrontation, um, but polite professional confrontation. And of course, there's a there's a way of talking about things and raising things. I'm never ever going to be a person who will shout and scream and swear at somebody. That's just not me at all, even though I know Sometimes even the most calmest composed people can be pushed to extremes in situations when they've been made to feel silly or they've been made or left feeling that somebody was questioning their abilities to do their job or even take work and career out of uh, the conversation. And even just in personal life, we can come up against all sorts of things in today's world. And it can really hit sort of buttons which make us very extremely emotional and can feel that we are um, on that personal vendetta and somebody is trying to personally, maliciously almost sometimes, attack us as the person who we very are. Now I think, what can we do about this going forward and what have I learned? So taking it a context of having a hearing problem, going through some health problems, which unfortunately I've had a few episodes of passing out. Um, it's still up in the air at the moment about whether it's seizures or one thing or another, but it's all going under investigation. But what does sometimes happen to me and has been, so it's about 22, gradually getting a little bit worse, is when I've had these episodes and I go back to work, sometimes it can take me a little bit longer to grasp and run with things. So I'm not always as quick on the ball uh, with things, but yet this doesn't affect me, uh, my capabilities. It doesn't define me. It just means that I need to take a little bit more time when composing myself for a work situation or whether it be where I'm going out with family or one through another, I just need to take my time a little bit more. A little bit like with a hearing problem that when I'm having a conversation with somebody, whether it be in the workplace, a professional environment or uh, with family, loved ones, which I don't need to worry about because they usually always get me. If not, it's usually one of my brothers having a bit of a joke with me. But usually any aspect in life, when you have a hearing problem, yes, as much as I can put myself forward and I can be actively listening and I can do all of those great things to ensure that I'm switched on and I've got everything I can do to control it, there are always things in life which you will just miss something or you'll perhaps accidentally say something and it will be a bit of a running, running sort of joke 
um, and you get that bit of tongue-in-cheek from somebody that perhaps you've misheard something or you've said something in the wrong place. That happens to me all the time. So it's just as much as the onus is on somebody else to actually take the responsibility and ensure that whoever they're talking, they're communicating with, they do it appropriately. Number one, do you know if that person's got something which you need to change your communication style with them? So there is very much, you can beat yourself up, but there is an onus on the person who is sometimes giving you a direction or communicating with you that they need to ensure that they are selecting the right communication choices first of all. Now you may be thinking, hmm, you're clutching at straws there. Absolutely not. Let's break that down a little bit further. So especially so, we keep coming back to it in the workplace, but again, just in in life in general. I often think that when somebody comes across to me and perhaps they're a little bit sharp or they may seem hmm, a little bit riled up or sometimes just a little bit rude, unfortunately, I often think, what is that person going through? So number one, I would always say, just take a step back. Don't never just jump straight away down that person's throat. Of course, be uh, be to the point, but still be polite, but do confront them. Actually, you were a little bit rude there. Do you mind just elaborating a little bit more on what you meant? Or was there a reason why you spoke the way you did? Nine times out of ten, it will just break into conversation that actually, oh, I was a little bit stressed or I didn't sleep particularly well last night, or there's this going on. I have done that, and that has broken... That's that's kind of broken areas where I've actually helped people, where I found out that actually their partner is going through something at the moment, or perhaps one of their loved ones is going through at the moment. Uh, there's been a, a couple of instances in the last year or so where I've actually, that's out of character for that person or how they've sent that email, which is a whole other board game. We're not going to go into this one. But things can be construed very, very differently. And that person, hopefully, nine times out of ten, would no way have meant it to have come across like that. Now, there will always be instances in life where someone is just maliciously sort of sets out to be downright rude, damn nasty. I've had it from working in my uh, retail banking career prior to what I'm in now. I'm of customer service. I had people just blatantly rude and unfortunately we live in a fallen world and there will always be that aspect of it. It's up to us to overcompensate for that and it's up to us to be polite and courteous and just to keep spreading that goodness and positivity in our daily lives. Let's move forward. So in the workplace, I know we keep coming back to it, but it is a big thing for me. We spend most of our time in work, but it should never define us. So no, I just want to concentrate on that for a moment as well. When someone speaks to us in a certain way and it makes us feel a certain way, we have to, number one, just take a step back and split what we're feeling out into two. We have to go work, personal. And on that note, we have to always, always think that the reason why they're asking you a question or they're being a little bit sort of um, confrontational or they're asking you a question in the way which they are, number one, think of it as this. They are questioning you in your capability of your role, not as a person. They're not questioning you on a personal ability of you, uh, for example, a personal attack to you at all or any of your ethics or your personality or whoever you are or whatever you stand for. That is not what this is about. When it's in work, there is a very, very high stricken fence between you and your work role. So what you present yourself as at work, that is what you are being questioned on in terms of your capabilities and your requirements of doing that role to the best of your ability. Now, t nine times out of 10, everybody goes to work to do the best they can in that job. Now, sadly, there are people who have come before us who may have given a bit of a poor reputation about doing uh, not what they should be in that role. So sometimes we do have to just go and bear it and we do have to just think, do you know what? That somebody is speaking to me in this way, they're questioning if something's going to be done on time or they're questioning, have you done enough or have you done this? Because they're used to, number one, do this to yourself. They're used to not such a great service of what you're providing. So you're providing above and beyond service and they're not used to that. So they're finding it a bit strange. So they're questioning, have you really done this? So take pride in your work and absolutely say, yes, I have. Moving forward, again, staying on that same analogy of the work you and the personal you, whenever you get questioned, if you think to yourself, hmm, I didn't like how that person came across to me. Remember, firstly, they're not attacking you, okay? They're not questioning you personally. They're questioning your role. So let's break that down a bit further. Your role. I wonder if you've had all the training you need, okay? I wonder if you have all the tools you need to do your job fully and completely. Because if you haven't, 
then there we go. The ball's back in your court. And you can actually question, you're speaking to me in this manner, you're making me feel like that I'm not capable and I'm not valid in the role I'm doing, but yet actually, out of 10, I've only got five pieces of equipment which I need, or I've only got this amount of information or communication from other stakeholders within my company. So I've done my job, but somebody else is actually letting me down. And that's the reason why you're having to come to me. Do you see what I'm trying to do? I'm always trying to think, and I'm not making up excuses here at all, because sadly, unfortunately, the world we live in, there will always be somebody who will set out to be maliciously. And that's why I say it's our job to stay over positive and do our work over and above on, and just to be that great person to be around. Because do you know what? Number one, wherever you are in the world, if you if you express that energy of positivity and you're always kind of knocking back those tongue-in-cheek comments and, and you're not nasty, you're not negative, you come to work and you spread good energy and you're polite, you're courteous, you you support people, you go out of your way to support people, people see that. Now, do you know what? I do that all the time, but I still get these comments and I still sometimes get made to feel that actually questioning my capabilities. So then we have to go back to the work and personal scenario and actually think, do you know what? you may just quite simply come down to the point that actually you're trying to question my role as such and go straight back to that person and say, okay, is there something you actually want to say and close it down? If I'm not doing my job correctly, do you want to suggest how I can do it? And you know, I've done that before and that's actually broken out conversations. We've made changes within the role and actually I've suggested different elements of training and it was actually through an experience where I was training an apprentice. So all of these areas, sometimes it can actually be, it can be motives to actually go back and think, okay, you're questioning me that, you're questioning my capability. So clearly you think something's not wrong here, uh, not right here, sorry. And it's certainly not with me. So go back, explore these areas. And that's vitally important. Never just go home and sit on those feelings of how you've been made to feel. Because at the end of the day, we could kind of be taking things too personal. I had a bit of a rotten day today with certain things. And this is where I'm coming from today. And when I finished work, I had a conversation with my mum. And she actually said to me, why are you taking this so personally? You've done the best you can. You work hard. Why are you taking this so personally? And actually, do you know what? I thought to myself over dinner. Yeah. Why, Bradley, are you wasting time? Because ultimately we do not work. OK, bear in mind. Let, hold, stay with me on this. We do not live to work. We work to live. Let me do that again. We do not live to work. We work to live. We. <laughs> so on that essence, what we must always do, no matter what's happened throughout work or what's happened in our personal life, when we're home and we close the front door, we must then go back to being us and we must leave it until the next day. If you're going through the street, for, for, uh, for example, or you're out and you perhaps get a comment from somebody or somebody's been rude or somebody's made you question something about yourself or I don't know your confidence, it could be one of many things with the world we live in today. You must always, if you can, resolve it there. And if you're worrying about it, okay, and you can't resolve it there, think of it this way. If you cannot resolve it within the next five minutes, then put it to one side and don't worry about it. Sometimes, and I, I hate to say this, whether it's personal work, wherever you are in the world, people sometimes can have a funny way of just showing an interest in you. Sometimes it can be an air of jealousy. Sometimes it could be somebody, unfortunately, jealous of the root and the hard work you've put in, but yet on Facebook, they haven't seen that. All they've seen and the perception they've seen is that you've jumped into this high role or in percep uh, perception in personal life, they see you going into, I don't know, a certain store or they see you in a certain situation with a big happy family and they could be going through absolutely hell in their personal life and thinking, how on earth with this person? They don't know what you've gone through to be where you are. So I think it's always having that kind of mutual respect, whoever we come into contact with in this life, but also being ready to actually take charge of our life as well, not to walk away and feel all riled up and stressed about, oh, I don't feel good enough and questioning your capabilities, or perhaps I'm just not good enough for this role or good enough for this situation or good enough to do this, or let's spin it around again in relationships. Perhaps I'm not good enough to be that person. Have confidence and have faith in yourself because there is only one of you in this life. There is only one of you on this world, and that simply makes you amazing. So have 
confidence in your abilities. Have faith in all which you bring to you in every situation. So for example, everybody brings a wealth of experience and qualities and skills and life experience. And if you had a room of 30 people, every single person in that room would be different. They'd have a different experience, a different viewpoint. Now they may not always express that and you may get people in groups uh, sort of agree with each other, but actually deep down, they will always have a difference of opinion because they're a different person. They're not you. What I think of something would certainly not be what my, for example, twin brother thinks of something. We have very, very different views and that's okay. And it's healthy to have that, but it's also healthy to keep that in composure and in a structured form of what's polite, what's not polite, what's ethical to say, what's not ethical to say, and what's polite and what's just being downright rude. And sadly, no matter how we look at it throughout this world, we always come back to that aspect of living in a fallen world and that there is always going to be that individual out there. But never let somebody question your capabilities and anything what you've gone through life, because number one, they don't understand you. They don't know. And what I would like to just finish on is that in any situation, whether it be relationships, you're questioning in a relationship or your finances, you're questioning if you're, uh, let's say, capable enough or if you'd ever reached that goal or perhaps, let's say, wanting to buy a car or wanting to buy a house or somebody in the family needs your help and support and perhaps you feel that you just can't do it or someone's questioning you just can't support them. And it could be work again. It could be one of many things. The first thing we've got to do is take stock and we've actually got to look at ourselves inside and we've got to value all of what we bring to ourselves. When you look in that mirror and you look at yourself, forget your looks, forget your appearance and deep down inside in your heart, what you actually have, what do you stand for? Is it your tenacity? Is it your integrity? Is it respect? Is it that you try to make a difference from the minute you wake up in the morning to the minute you go to bed at night? What do you stand for? And as long as you've got those values and you home on those values in every single situation, whether it be work or home, you're always going to succeed. Sometimes it doesn't matter if things don't go right at work or perhaps you haven't got something done today or perhaps you've said the wrong thing in a relationship or perhaps you've even said a wrong thing to a loved one. As long as you've got the right intentions at heart and that motivation to always do good and succeed and to look after others and not to be selfish and not to be nasty or vindictive or any of those horrible traits, then you will always succeed and you will always have the upper hand in a situation for anybody who's questioned your abilities or made you feel not good enough or made you feel silly or stupid or any of those horrible terms. Always think whenever that thought comes into your head and it can literally just be as simple as a tool. Just I'm just going to ignore you today. I'm you're lying. And I do it. I absolutely do it because our head can be so busy with so many different thoughts in our mind. It's it's full of traffic all the time, isn't it? And you get a thought come in your mind, you're not good enough. Somebody says something, it spurs something on. Perhaps they don't think I'm good enough. Or perhaps I'm not good enough for this situation. Or perhaps somebody means something, but they're not just going to come out and say it. It's your mind. So sometimes in your own head, or even just say it if you're quietly to yourself, you're lying. Don't be ridiculous and concentrate on the values here and here that you're strong, you're determined and whatever you stand for and just hold on to that all the time and you will always be successful. And if anybody ever questions your capabilities or makes you feel stupid, just remember, you are you. They know nothing about you. And nine times a 10, nine times a 10, nine times out of 10, that person's not being nasty. They're ever questioning your role, yourself in your role at work. It's not personal, or they may be going through something in their personal life and you're the first person they see. It doesn't make it right, but they're the first person who you see to, they see to lash out on. So it's that kind of healthy balance. So number one, lasting message. Nine times out of 10, nobody would ever set out to be nasty, but we have to be realistic that there are always those instances in this life. And number two, if somebody does always make you feel like that, or occasionally, or if you're going through someone, something, sorry, have the confidence to own it, own yourself, own these values in here and up here, and actually confront them, positively confront them. And if you can't do that, and you just want to leave it until another day, that's okay as well, but never lose this and all of what you stand for. On that note, God bless, and thank you very much for being here. And until next time, I hope you can join me. Thank you very much. Bye for now.